I wish to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that I am filming on today, the Gimui Walubara Yadinji people. I also wish to acknowledge their elders, past, present, and emerging. Please help me to cleanse all negative energies, entities, and spirits from my body, from my home, from my animals, and from my objects, so that I may offer clear, honest messages to the four groups today. Thank you, spirit. Hi everyone and welcome to another video. If this is the first time that you're seeing me, I am the Hermit Tarot and this is my YouTube channel. A massive welcome back to those who are joining me again. It is so wonderful to have you all here. I have a feeling that this reading is going to be a lot more personal and not a lot of people seem to be interested in finance readings. Um, I personally love to do them. <laughs> I probably put a lot more um, of my own vested interest into these readings and that kind of shows as well with the layout. I've already pre-shuffled a lot of oracle cards. I'm excited to get some clear, honest messages for you about your finances. Now the thing is, because we are talking about money, I do have to give a little disclaimer. So before we get into the reading, legally I must inform you that this is a reading for entertainment purposes only. I highly recommend that you seek professional advice if you are thinking about making any major changes to your income or to your financial investments. I do often offer, um, I wouldn't say advice, but I do often offer insights into what could be helpful for your situation. But if we're talking about your future, your stability, your family's stability, I highly recommend that you consult a financial advisor or an accountant or somebody of the legal profession who can give you some insight onto how to better manage your assets. This reading is attempting to tune into the collective energy between us so that I can intuitively guide you towards some solutions on how to maximize your financial situation, as well as how to overcome blockages you may be experiencing in your finances. I do these readings on myself and I've become so good at reading when it comes to money that I just, I can do it without even using cards. So I'm really excited to be able to share this these messages and this reading with you and thank you so much to those who persisted and persistently reminded me that I'm way overdue for a reading like this. I'm very grateful to all of you for making it to this reading. Now here's what we are covering. We are asking spirit what do you need to know about your money? This is including your income, this is including your career, including your job, including your debt, including anything that has to do with your money, your finances. I will also be asking spirit, what current blockages or challenges are you experiencing with your money? What are the upcoming opportunities you will experience with your money? And we will get closing advice as well. I have pre-shuffled a lot of cards here. I don't know if you can read my handwriting, but I have a little list of what each of these cards means to me. And I'm going to be clarifying with tarot along the way as well. So we are going to be covering quite a lot. I do have four groups because there is not an extended reading. So I do have the energy to be able to film more groups. If you are a Hermi or you are a subscriber on Instagram, you will have had early access to this reading. Welcome, everybody. Um, that is to make up for the fact that there is going to be no extended reading for this reading. So we're going to try to cover as much information as we can in the first part of your reading. So with all of that out of the way, let me introduce the four groups to you. Starting over here with group number one, you guys have the shape shifter showing up. If you feel drawn to this card or the number 15, then you will be a part of group one's reading. Group two, you have the ring. And all of these cards are from the Wild Archetypes, Wild Unknown Archetypes deck by Kim Kranz. So if you feel drawn to this card, the ring or the number 57, then you will be a part of group two's reading. Group three, you have the Venom card over here. 
So if you feel drawn towards this card or the number 58, you will be a part of group three's reading. And group four, you have the prayer card. So if you feel drawn towards this card or the number 50, what is that? 65, sorry, the number 65, then you'll be a part of group four's reading. So go back if you need a better look at each of the four groups. Pause the video if you need more time. If you want intuitive help, I do have a one minute meditation that will be playing after this clip. It is a guided meditation created to connect you to your intuition so that you can intuitively select a group. But as I always say, when you know which of these four groups you are feeling most drawn to, click on the timestamps in the description box or in the pinned comment and join me in your reading. So the first thing I want you to do with me is to take in two deep mindful breaths. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Now I want you to focus on clearing your mind. It's natural to have thoughts racing at this point. I want you to embrace each thought as it comes and let it slip as quickly as it came in. Focus on clearing and balancing out these thoughts so that they come and go without a desire to be attached to them. And now, with the rest in mind, I want you to think of the first group that comes to your mind. It may be a number, it may be an object that I showed you, it could be a specific colour, it could be a feeling that you felt when I showed you each of the groups today. When you are ready and when you feel confident, select your group and join me in your reading. Welcome group one to your finance reading. We're asking spirit, what do you need to know about your money? If you chose the shapeshifter card, then this is going to be your reading. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, before I get into your reading, I gotta go through my little spiel. So first of all, this will not have an extended reading. This reading is just for YouTube. My loyal Hermes and subscribers on Instagram, you will have early access to this reading to make up for that. So make sure you're checking stories, checking your emails to take advantage of that early access. Um, by the time you're seeing this, if it's on YouTube, it would have been a little bit too late, but that will happen in future as well. So make sure that you are subscribed to be notified if, by your email if you're a Hermi. Um, the other thing I need to say is there will be a a lot of information covered in these readings so please make sure more than ever that you have something to take notes with i don't expect this reading to be super long but i do expect this reading to be super informative so do make sure that you're taking notes of what does resonate and making a little list of what doesn't resonate just in case it resonates at a later date so my group ones what do you need to know about your money so this is the card that i pulled for that question specifically what do you need to know about your money group one this tells me that your financial situation is currently evolving however with a shapeshifter energy this means that something could have been in front of you for a very long time but you've only recently noticed that it is taking the shape of something else so the way that i see it is an opportunity or a solution may not have been as obvious to you until other events have happened that have made you want to do this again. The shapeshifter doesn't always talk about the most ideal opportunity when it comes to your money. It might just be the most convenient, the most available given the circumstances that you're in. So let's clarify with some tarot spirit for my group ones. What do they need to know? about their finances with this shapeshifter energy. We have the chariot reversed. This is the best tarot deck by Mike Costany. 
we all need to know. We have the Ten of Cups in the upright position. We also have the Queen of Cups reversed. One more deck, one more deck, one more card. What do they need to know? What does Group 1 need to know? We have the Hanged Man showing up. And at the back of the deck is the Page of Cups. Okay. So, this is a lot bigger than what I was expecting. It seems that you guys may have gotten yourselves into a situation financially. Um, I don't want to, I don't feel like this is a bad place to be in. It just feels like your well being is more important to you right now. So, what you need to know about your money is that Spirit is trying to give you a new perspective on how you can prior prioritize your family life and your emotional connections. All of these cards are water cards. We've got Pisces, we've got Cancer, sorry, Cancer, and I don't really see much Scorpio, to be honest. This is Cancer to me, these three cards are Cancer, and that's Pisces. So I just feel like you've got a lot of opportunity here to be able to focus more on your emotional connections. There could be a connection specifically that you're wanting to focus on, especially if you have children, because a younger person is coming through, a dynamic between a younger person. Um, but this younger person's energy is also about being able to have more fun and about being able to enjoy the little moments, the little things with the people around you. So if this is a friend, this would be somebody who you really enjoy their company. They feel like family. You need to know that your financial situation is supposed to be set up to be able to support your emotional needs. So it seems that most of the focus is on your emotional connections right now. Family time, quality time with loved ones. You don't need to race ahead especially if you are an ambitious person or if you feel like you have a lot of weight on your shoulders financially. It seems that your income is there to just boost your emotional needs. And you may need to even train your mind to see that because this card over here is all about perspective and getting a new perspective and when it comes to a financial reading, this card is about looking at maybe trying something new that supports this type of lifestyle. That supports quality time, family time, time with loved ones. Because you guys may be prone to careers that really take away from that. Because you guys give, you may be prone to jobs that are very demanding of you. They could start off as being very flexible, but before you know it, you're working overtime and you're working on holidays and you're working on the weekends and you're working without being kind of compensated fairly. Or even if there is a financial compensation, that's not what your journey needs right now. Your journey needs you to be more emotionally available to your loved ones. So it seems that Spirit is saying, you need to know that when it comes to your money, money is the support, the foundation for experiences with people you care about. And you should not use money as a blockage or a limitation that keeps you from emotional experiences, whether that is with family, whether that is with romantic partners, or even friends. Seems you really need to focus on how money may be stopping you from experiencing emotional intimacy, which is an interesting question. Uh, question? Yeah. How is your pursuit of finances blocking you from emotional intimacy? Especially in pre-established connections. In connections where people are wanting more of your time and 
or even wanting to get to know you better with this page of cups people who want to get to know you better um so let's have a look at what your current energy towards money is we have the bat card coming out for you in the reversed position so this is a blockage when it's reversed it's not always a bad thing though we're colorful beings right so if we're gonna use archetypes to understand our energy we need to appreciate that there's duality so when the cards reverse we're looking at the shadow aspect of this energy the shadow side of the duality so let's have a look I don't want to mince words, so I'm going to get straight to the guidebook to make sure that I'm covering everything that needs to be covered. Bat energy, please, spirit, for Thank you. Group one. So the bat energy, here's what the cards, uh, the deck, sorry, the guidebook says. Pause it if you want to read it for yourself, but I am going to read it out for all of you as well. So this bat energy is about darkness, letting go, death leading to rebirth. Before emerging, the bat waits for the sun to set and the moon to rise. In the darkness, it can see all that was invisible in the daylight hours. The bat is a master of the subtle senses, of the underlying forces that cause some things to prosper and other things to fade. The bat card shows up to signify the ending of a chapter, the closing of a door. The bat comes swiftly, encouraging us to move on. In just a few hours, a new day dawns, no more lingering in the past. When out of balance, this energy refuses to let go and reminisces. To bring into balance, watch the sun rise. I do think that you guys are in a state of metamorphosis. It feels like metamorphosis. I think transformation takes away the, the natural energy of this process. When we think of a transformation, we almost imagine something very spectacular and exciting or something that's very large scale but a metamorphosis is a very natural process of energy transmuting and that can impact the matter that we see so on a tangible level you guys do need to appreciate that now is the time to consider letting go and adapting your energy is already there though but when it's reversed it's like you're refusing to let go your energy is refusing to let go. Spirit, what is group one refusing to let go of? What is group one refusing to let go of? Okay, whoops. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. We've got two cards on the ground as well. So we've got the tower falling on the car, uh, falling on the card, falling on the desk, and the ten of cups both reversed. We also have the lovers card reversed, and justice reversed. What is that? Goodness. The back of the deck we have the five of pentacles reversed. Okay. I do think that what you're refusing to let go of is a situation that has become very unfair very one-sided with justice reversed and the love is reversed i did a reading on this recently on my instagram so you might resonate with that group that got the justice and lover card reversed so this is a feeling of being in a situation that benefits other people more than yourself you're you're refusing to see that your situation is not financially feasible you can't physically keep doing this either because it's not working to your benefit or it's simply not like in terms of it's not financially working to your benefit you're making other people more financially successful than yourself even though you're the one that's working hard or it's also because the situation that you're in doesn't support that emotional connection that we were talking about the ten of cups again you have no time for your close your family your home life for those important people it could be that the situation that you're in has you physically at a distance from the people that you love you're refusing to let go of the fact that this is unstable and it was always supposed to be temporary you're refusing to let go of the fact that this is not going to last this is going to crumble 
and you holding on to it is delaying that process and making it more destructive in the long term. If you were to embrace the metamorphosis that you're going through, however temporarily jarring that shift is, you'll be allowing the natural process of change to remove the instability, even if that seems destructive, so that you can start working on a strong foundation and rebuilding these strong connections. From a financial point of view, you're also opening yourself up to a better offer, to a situation that is more accommodating for your own personal needs. With Justice Reverse, this is an unfair contract, an unfair partnership, a one-sided commitment at the expense of another important aspect of your needs. And those needs seem to be emotional. The lover's card reverse is saying that you're also having trouble letting go your past decisions. You may be struggling to forgive yourself or it may be very hard for you to turn around and, and say, well, actually, no, like, I'm sorry. I know I signed the contract. I know I did this. I know I said I would do this for another six months, but actually, no, I have to go back on my word. I have to tell you that I've changed my mind. For some reason, there's this energy of pride around changing your mind or, or speaking your mind and not wanting to or not feeling confident enough in communicating what is on your mind. So that's what you're having trouble letting go of. And that is your current energy towards your finances. I'm going to leave these cards here. I've got to get two more decks because I didn't think that we would do this, but I'm noticing synchronicities like the two ten of cups. Um, so I'm going to get two more tarot decks and we'll have a look at what your main blockage in finances is. Okay, I've got two more decks, so let's continue. Group one, your main blockage in your finances is Vesta. Interesting. I will need to double check because I'm not confident with Vesta. But from the top of my head, I believe that has something to do with your health. Vesta, 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 please, spirit. Oh, I thought the asteroids... Oh, they're at the end. Thank you, spirit. Vesta, I just saw it. The keeper. Oh, my bad. Mm. The hearth. Yeah. In a reading, right now is all about you and reconnecting to your passion. Where does your spark and inspiration reside and how can you turn it into a roaring fire? Sometimes we feel that initial urge to create, but don't know how to direct it productively. Vesta grants us the gift of focus. Everything is falling into place and will continue to do so as long as we stay continued to on genuine, sorry, as long as we stay genuine in our desires. You may be asked to give something up in exchange for getting what you want. How much are you willing to sacrifice? Follow your instincts and your intuition and the choice will be easy. Once you make this decision, you have to give it 110% to see it all the way through. So in astrology, Vesta represents a higher calling within ourselves. We all have the potential for complete service and devotion. And this asteroid points to where that lives in our chart. This area can be intensely private because we fear contamination in the form of other people's thoughts and feelings. Ironically, this can make us very judgmental to the way others do things. We consider our system of doing things correct and any dissenter is instantly labeled wrong. So she was the Roman goddess of the home and the hearth. And her worshippers were known as the Vestal Virgins. Before she swore her, her devotion to the flame, Vesta and her sisters were swallowed by their father, who was worried they would usurp his power. So upon being freed, Vesta swore she would never be trapped by a man again. So she took a vow of chastity and created her idea of home. So you guys may resonate with that theme of feeling trapped in financial situations or in jobs 
that take you away from your home. Key words with this card are nurturing, warmth, focus, devotion, tending, and sacrifice. As a main blockage, it does feel like that story is very much in sync with the other themes we're seeing in your reading. So if you really don't resonate with these themes at all, you are probably needing to have a look at a different group because this is a group that is trying to make changes to their financial situation that allow them more opportunities at home with loved ones at home. And you seem to be very aware of how somebody in your financial life or a contract in your finances is limiting your power to progress. Some of you could be salespeople as well. And maybe there's like a percentage on your commissions that is limiting your ability to see the growth of your effort. This whole time I was saying vested, vested, and we ended up getting Vesta. So it does seem like your circumstances aren't allowing you to nurture your full potential. But it also seems like you're at a point in life where you don't need to be out here ambitiously chasing your highest good. Because if you do put yourself in the position of, of fighting for your freedom, like this card says, you have to give it 110%. So a blockage for you right now could be that you are putting so much focus on your money that you're not able to give other areas of your life anything. Or you may feel like you're, you're having to give so much energy to other areas of your life that you're not able to give your finances 110%. You're not as focused on what is best for you right now. So let's clarify. We'll use this deck. What is group one's main blockage when it comes to money spirit? What is group one's main blockage? We have the Queen of Cups upright. What is Group 1's main blockage? We have the Devil reversed. We have the Page of Swords reversed. One more card, please, Spirit. What is Group 1's main blockage in money? Well, okay. I'll take you. The Eight of Wands reversed and the Two of Wands reversed at the back of the deck. So a main major blockage in your, I want to say love life because it's so, <laughs> it's so second nature at this point um, in your finances, group one, is a lack of passion. It feels like you guys have lost your genuine interest, your genuine passion for whatever it is that you do to make money. It feels like you guys are also missing that sense of curiosity. You guys may be very intelligent people or you may be people that have very specific ways, um, skills, sorry, that make you very good at what you do in certain jobs or careers. But it seems like you've outgrown your current situation. You're not getting that spark of curiosity anymore. You're not feeling interested in what you're doing anymore. Your main blockage is feeling like you don't have many choices, that you don't have many options. A main blockage here is feeling like you only have one thing that you can do in this situation. And you may be very judgmental over your circumstances as well, feeling like this is what you have to do. You may also feel that if you change or if you make any drastic changes, other people are going to judge you or you're worried about what other people are going to think. A major blockage here with the devil card reversed is also about you feeling like the situation is a lot more uh, harder than what it is. Feeling like you're trapped in a situation and, and getting out of it is going to be more difficult than what it is. You also may be experiencing a level of guilt or shame about giving up or throwing in the towel 
doing something different. Sometimes when the devil is reversed, we in a careers reading or in a money reading, it can also feel like we've kind of bitten off more than we can chew. We've played with fire and now we're getting burned. So this is what we deserve. You guys may feel like it's not easy to get out because you almost need an excuse or a scapegoat to get out. And you also may be comparing your situation to those you know and going, well, there's, their life's a lot harder, so I really shouldn't be complaining. I do think with the devil card reversed, you're trying not to see yourself as a victim. You're trying not to see yourself as somebody who needs help or who is in jeopardy for whatever reason. You're also ignoring a lot of the warning signs and you may be seeking temporary moments of relief to kind of numb or distract you from the glaring overall truth. Your blockage here is about instant gratification as well and not paying attention to long-term side effects of temporary distractions. I do think with the Queen of Cups being here, some of you guys are worried about somebody else, what they think of you, a mother, a lover. It does feel like this Queen of Cups is what Vesta was talking about, you keeping your passions and your curiosities and your interests a secret because you don't want other people's feelings to contaminate your hopes. You also are afraid of how their feelings for you are going to um, shift your focus. You may have a plan, you may have desires, but you aren't allowing those around you to know or you don't want people to worry, maybe. It almost feels like you're afraid that you'll lose momentum. So that's what I'm seeing as main blockages. Let's have a look at your main opportunities now. Main opportunities for you, we have angel light in the shadow position. So showing it to you upright, angel light is an energy that in this deck connected to um, Aquarius, the number 11, that interesting yoga pose at the bottom and your third eye chakra. So remember with your challenges, Vesta was saying you need to trust your instincts. You need to trust your intuition. You guys are ignoring your higher calling right now. A main blockage for you is ignoring your higher calling. So your main opportunity is an intuitive pull in a new direction with this Aquarius energy, angelite energy, new opportunities that can help reshape a dynamic future, an innovated, innovative outcome, something that you weren't previously considering had you not been put into this position it could be a very different choice that impacts your lifestyle as well but Aquarius makes me think that this is something that is going to be mentally stimulating it's going to be challenging in the ways that it pulls you back and you want to kind of keep thinking about it and, and investing time and energy into it I do think for a lot of you, this Aquarius energy is also talking about you being open-minded. So let's get some tarot out here. What is group one's main opportunity in their money? With their money, I should say. What is group one's main opportunity with their money spirit? Group one's main opportunities with their money, please, sir. Group one's main opportunities. Okay, there we go. We got something. We have the two of swords. Another card about balanced thinking, intuitive thinking. We also got the five of cups reversed. I'm hearing pick yourself up, dust yourself off. The glass is still half full. So you guys may have received disappointing news recently. I've got to pick these cards up. Okay, <laughs> you guys may have received disappointing news recently. 
and it's been hard for you to understand how this is going to impact your life as well as your what you want it's really important with the five of cups reverse that you process this healthily your main opportunity is to recognize that change is helpful it is essential for growth and sometimes it's also a blessing in disguise what may feel like a loss is actually an opportunity to focus on other things and to shift your focus to other things what else spirit is group one's main opportunity in their money with their money what are we have the Ten of Pentacles. One more card. What is the main opportunity for group one with their money? Okay, we also have the Four of Wands. Now, the language I'm using is to try to simplify the whole thing for you, but I want you to understand that we always have choices. We always have choices which means you're going to have multiple opportunities i'm choosing to say opportunity so that we can just focus on the obvious but you always have choices just because i'm talking about something specifically in this reading doesn't mean it's your only option so your main opportunity ace of wands at the back is about rebirth redirection of energy and finding a way to start fresh after what feels like a false start or cancelled plans. Repurposing old energy and renewing that energy into a new direction, a new sense of purpose, a new passion. It seems that your biggest opportunity is about using the information that you have to make an instinctive decision about what you want to do next. You guys may need more information in order to do that. So I highly recommend researching online. With the Two of Swords, asking people close to you for more information. But follow through on what you instinctively feel you need to do. Making a balanced decision is your priority in terms of being able to make the most out of the situation that you're in. The Two of Swords doesn't rush as well as what I want to remind you. From the beginning, we had that message of slowing down and getting a new perspective the Two of Swords doesn't need to rush. They do eventually need to make um, some pretty difficult decisions. But before they get to that point, it's important that they have all the information they need. We talked about the Five of Cups already. What feels like a loss could have been a blessing in disguise. There's still other things you can focus on. The Ten of Pentacles and the Four of Wands reversed. I do feel like your main opportunity right now is about falling back on the strong foundation you've already built for yourself. Some of you are feel like very successful people who already have a cushiony sort of comfortable lifestyle or a nest egg that they can kind of settle into. It feels like you have a lot to be proud of. You have a lot to be proud of. This is not a moment to feel ashamed. Your main opportunity is financial success, longevity. I do think that a new beginning would only add to what you've already been able to create to yourself, for yourself. Your main opportunity is a continued level of success. If you can come to a decision about how to repurpose your current energy and observe this new perspective for what it is, your next opportunity could be a long-term successful career if you can follow through with your information gathering and trust your instincts and really invest 110% into this. This new beginning could very well be the long-term financial, what's the word I'm looking for, opportunity that you've been wanting. But the Ten of Pentacles isn't just about money. It's also about legacy energy. And family can often be connected to it as well. In this deck, it's just one person with a white bird and a rose. So I do feel like this group's main opportunity is about getting to a state of status and financial status that you have been wanting. I do think you will receive good news 
But I think it comes off of your ability to be able to redirect your focus and your energy and to navigate rejections or setbacks or losses. It doesn't happen straight away is what I feel. You have to really offer yourself that new perspective. Be flexible. With the four of wands reverse specifically, I feel like your main opportunity is a is about getting out of your comfort zone and putting yourself in a new place. So for some of you, this is about physically moving. This is about physically working in a new environment. And financially, this is about being flexible with your lifestyle and examining how your money impacts your lifestyle and how your lifestyle impacts your money. Your biggest opportunity in order to secure this financial status that you want you need to be flexible with your lifestyle with your home and with your needs in terms of this isn't about the bare minimum right but this is about thinking outside the box a little bit which is what Aquarius is about as well it might be about re-examining your expenses how you are investing energy and resources so that you can be more accommodating to what this career needs. So let's get some closing advice for you now. For my group ones, what is their closing advice when it comes to their money? What is group one's closing advice? We have memory in the reverse position. So this card has Leo, it's the number 16, and it's also the Rosemary card. Get one more card. What is their closing advice? Thank you, spirit. We also have wisdom, bay leaves, the number 22, and more Leo energy. So you have a lot to be proud of with this Leo energy group one. When it comes to money, you have a lot to be proud of, but don't let pride get in your way as well because you are in a state of metamorphosis and this development that you're experiencing is completely natural and it's actually to your benefit. As much as it seems to take, you are also bound to receive. It's very important that you are open to collaboration and partnerships in the helpful way. I can see with the number 22, you also have a responsibility to follow up on things that have been left in your hands. You can't expect people to meet you halfway if you're not putting in the effort as well. So I do think it's in your best interest to follow up, to um, follow up on your own ideas, your own curiosities, your own passions, um, but to also follow up when you don't hear back or when you need more information. I can also see somebody offering you wisdom. If you really need somebody's support or somebody's advice, there is somebody who has the experience who can give you helpful information, either because they've done what you're about to do or because they are there to offer advice as part of their profession. They're paid to make sure that you are supported with information. So consider reaching out to somebody who is wise and who has the experience that you need, the wisdom that you need. With memory reversed, you guys need to be careful about letting sentimental attachment get in your way. It almost feels like there is this pull towards your past or towards sentiments that is, is it sentiments or sentience? Sentimental value that is holding you back. So I do think with Rosemary, this is about protecting yourself, protecting your own vested interests, protecting your own passions, and just being able to observe what your own individual wants and needs are before you consider kind of how this is going to impact other people. I do think that this is about self-preservation more than it is about being selfish. Honestly, you have a lot to be proud of and there is a lot more to gain, but when it comes to this Leo energy, it also feels like there could be shame or guilt. If you share what you want to do with other people, they could guilt you out of it or they could shame you out of it. So be wary of that. 
in an unhelpful way. And at the back of the deck, we do have the love card, which is the tomato card in this deck. I honestly see a lot of growth with that number 30. And Libra is here too to say that we need to be making balanced decisions, objective decisions when it comes to our money. And we don't have to be cold and callous when we come to these decisions. We can be compassionate, loving, understanding, but we have to do what is best for our future. And we have to consider how this is going to impact us in the long term. We're doing these things for long term growth, for long term stability, but more so for the ability to continue growing. We don't want to get stuck and stagnant. This is a group that needs to be flexible, that needs to observe a new perspective to be able to make room for what matters to you. And it does seem like your family connections or your, your loved ones are conflicting with your money needs right now. I want to clarify that this is your financial needs. This isn't about ambition. It really feels like this is just about you following your higher calling and stepping into that path without feeling guilted or shamed. So that's what I'm seeing for you, group one. I hope this was a helpful money reading for you. We did cover a lot in this reading, so I really appreciate you for trusting me with your messages. It has been a journey. I hope you have a good little list of notes to refer back to. This reading will stay up for as long as I have this channel, so feel free to drop back in and re-listen if you need to. But before we go on and before we part ways, I wish you prosperity, abundance, happiness, health, wealth, and success, as well as joy on your journey ahead. Look after your beautiful selves. Thank you so much for all of your support. Until we meet again, bye. And welcome to your reading. If you chose the ring card, then this is going to be your reading. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Group two, we're asking spirit, what do you need to know about your money? And we're going to be covering a lot. As I said in the intro, I've pre-shuffled some oracle cards to help us get to where we need to be. Um, but I will also be clarifying each of these oracle cards with tarot as well, just to make sure that we get as much information as possible. So just a reminder, there is no extended reading in this reading. And I highly recommend that you get something to write notes, to take notes with. Um, make sure that you're writing down what doesn't resonate as well, just in case it resonates at a later date. So with all of that being said, let's get into it. Now, this first card does hold significance for your reading. I shuffled this card with the intention of asking spirit, what do you need to know about your money? And we got the ring. So the way that I see this is your financial situation may be evolving to a state of commitment it may be that you are currently receiving a commitment or you're stepping into a new role in your money that is going to reshape and restructure some things. It could also be boosting your financial situation because we often enter these commitments with the idea of either gaining more stability or more growth. So this is a good sign of you feeling like you are in something stable when it comes to your money. It could also be that you have developed a lot of habits that are very strong to the point where it's just in your nature now with money. Um, you need to know that certain habits that you've recently developed are positively improving your financial situation. And I also think that this is a sign that if you guys are waiting to hear back about a contract, um, it's probably going to be approved or it's going to progress to the next stage at the very least. So let's get some tarot out. Oops, are you okay? Do you want to go outside? I'm just going to let the dog go out. Okay, tarot. What deck should I use? We'll use this one first. For my group twos, please, spirit. What does group two need to know about their money? Ooh. I just got a sharp pain in my the side of my head. I don't usually get that. So you guys may have been putting a lot of mental work into a project recently or some sort of situation. 
Um, I usually get headaches like that when there's a lot of paperwork involved or when there's a lot of um, fine print, a lot to kind of read and to think about applications, that kind of stuff. What do they need to know? We have the six of wands. So I see a successful outcome here with your money, a victory. What do they need to know? Group two, what do they need to know about their money? We have the Ace of Pentacles reversed. We also have the Ten of Wands reversed. Okay, so some creative re-strategizing here. What else do they need to know about their money? I'm going to take the card in my hand. Page of Pentacles upright. Okay. Wheel of Fortunes at the back of the deck. They also want me to look at the Four of Cups and the Six of Pentacles reversed. So yeah, there is some sort of contract or loan that is very strong here in your reading. Um, you need to know that the odds are turning in your favor in general, but this is about managing your resources well. And the resources in this case is specifically your energy. So when it comes to your money situation, it's very important that you don't overdo it yet you need to just react there's only so much that you can control in this situation there's an element of this that feels like you have to go with the flow for those who have received rejection recently it feels like this rejection was for your benefit because you guys were probably taking on more than you could manage currently sorry group two for that interruption but yes as i was saying it feels like it was very important that that didn't go ahead so that you could restructure the amount of pressure, responsibilities, and also um, tasks in general that you have going on in your life. You guys do seem to be people who are currently having to reassess what you should be investing your energy into your finances could be impacting more than one area of your life or you guys may feel financially responsible for a lot of different other people you guys do experience a lot of recognition for what you are able to achieve and for what you also spend your money on so it seems that there is a mixture here of people being proud of you and also people being envious of you just something to kind of throw out there I don't know if it's obvious that people are envious of you but there is that energy felt from your end I do think that you are people that are good at knowing how to invest money usually I think that you are people that know when a good opportunity is presenting itself and you feel like people who may have also felt like a good opportunity recently missed you or you missed the chance to observe or to um, use that opportunity with that four of cups coming out. But I need you to know that that was intentional. It was very much about you being able to save your energy for what is to come because I see a fortunate turn of events here. And I also see with the page of pentacles that you guys are upskilling. Your money situation is leveling up. Could be because you're undertaking study or you're open to learning new skills that are gonna positively impact your income. But especially if you're thinking about getting a loan soon or paying off a loan, money seems to be coming in to make that possible. So let's have a look at what your current energy towards money is. We have the horse showing up in the reversed position. Intuitively, I feel like this energy is about kind of weighing up the pros and cons before you take action on something. There, there's an energy here of being unbridled and impulsive and almost throwing a wild card into the mix when it comes to what to do next with your finances. But with the horse reversed, you guys may be a little bit nervous about what is happening in your financial. Like I'm hearing you're spooked. 
about what is happening with your money. So you might have received an awareness or a revelation about something that has you feeling a little bit nervous. There's an energy here of not feeling experienced. Feeling like you're having to go through something that you've never been through before. You are coming across as somebody that likes to be prepared and that likes to kind of know what to expect. Something about your money situation, which could be stemming from your career, as well as your other responsibilities, has you feeling like you don't know what to expect. Let's see what other messages we can get from the guidebook. With this, oops, upside down. <laughs> Horse energy, we just went past it. There it is. So I'll let you pause the video if you want to read it yourself, but I will read it out as well. Okay. So with this horse energy, this horse is about momentum, freedom, expansive energy, and force. The horse represents the most masterful form of earth energy within the deck. It provides us with momentum so reliable, so supportive that you can ride on its back toward any goal, no matter how difficult the terrain. A horse personality is fully awakened, fully alive, and cannot be defeated. The horse's freedom becomes available to us when we hone and collect our energy through daily practice. Physical stamina, exercise, and mental focus, meditation, are the secret weapons behind the horse's legacy. When out of balance, this energy runs awake and feels weak. Runs away, sorry, <laughs> and feels weak. To bring into balance strength training, but when in balance, this energy is able to achieve anything and never gives up. So you guys may be feeling a little bit like you've got to, things are out of your control. There's a lot that is out of your ability. It also seems like your energy towards money is that you are doubting your ability to achieve something and you're considering giving up, letting go and doing something else. So let's get some tarot out now. For my group two spirit, what is their current energy towards money? What is group two's current energy towards money spirit? We have the two of wands in the upright position. What is, we have the six of swords coming out upright. What is group twos? We have the three of cups. I'm seeing a lot of Aquarius here. That's what I love about this deck. A lot of Mercury and Aquarius. What is their attitude towards money? We have the Knight of Swords. So it's like you want to. You're thinking about it. That would be cool. I need to move forward anyway. But in order to move forward, I've got to let something go. Hmm, this is interesting. At the back of the deck is the Seven of Swords. I'm almost wondering if this horse energy is supposed to be upright because you guys are very ambitious based on this energy you're showing up as people who are who are excuse me <laughs> who are very capable very um ambitious and you're also when you put your mind to something like you have this intuitive ability and this intelligence within you to be able to be successful so you're very perceptive about your financial situation. I feel like you're always thinking about how to make money, how to spend money. There's an energy here of innovation with the six of swords. Your energy towards money is that you are thinking about new ways forward. And in order to move forward, you may need to leave things behind. So I do think that there is a part of this energy that is spooking you, that might be making you feel nervous naturally, but it looks like your strong suit here is communication and also research. So if you are thinking about making a dynamic change 
to your financial situation, it is not a completely risky change because it comes out of calculation, research, and communication. You guys do seem to be desiring movement with your finances. Um, Whatever you're spending, you're looking for new ways to make it up. So even if you had recently spent a lot of money on something or you're thinking about spending a lot of money on something, it's because you're also thinking about how to make more money. It also seems like your attitude towards money is overall optimistic, but realistic. You seem to have your finger on the pulse here. You're thinking about how your finances health needs to be very realistic. You you guys seem to be aware of what you're spending. You're not just kind of like out here dropping money. There's an energy of you being very, at least instinctually or intuitively aware of what your budget is and what your income is. So you don't strike me as people that are on a strict budget. You strike me as people that are looking at boosting income for the sake of having the ambition to do more and to have more. So you guys may be saving money right now for a very specific experience, but I feel like you're doing your research on how you can just make more money instead of having to cut expenses. Um, I can see that there is a fork in the road here. Your current energy towards money is that you are looking forward, planning mode with this two of wands, strategizing, thinking about where to from here. And there's a lot of confidence behind this energy. We have Aries and Mars at the top of this card. A lot of confidence behind this energy. Whatever plans you're putting in place, they're backed by serious intentions as well as realistic actions. You're not just romanticizing well what if this life what if that's life like oh I would love to live in a house like this you're going well no I will live in a house like this so what can I do to get there what can I do to have that you guys are also coming across as very accountable people very dependable people Um, you take your money very seriously is what I feel so with the three of cups and the knight of swords over here I do think that your energy towards money is that you like money because of what it offers you, but it's not coming across as overtly bougie. I think I need to just say that there's going to be some people in this group that you could be minimalist, right? But there might be a bougie flair. Well, I like, I don't like to get too attached to material things, but I got a brand new Tesla because I'm all for environmentalism. So whatever it is, it's like you and money are friends <laughs> with that three of cups. Um, you use it for your specific interests to have specific experiences with specific people. And with the three of cups being here, you guys may even be somebody that other people come to for advice. Like, hey, how did you do that? What did you do that? You guys may feel like you're setting a- an example in your friend group or with your siblings There is an energy here of um, having fun overall with your money and with your finances. And the Knight of Swords overall is about that quick reaction, that quick action. So I feel like a lot of you, money is something that seems to add to whatever it is that you're working on right now. Is there anything else I'm missing or am I just repeating myself, Spirit? Yeah, your energy towards money is that you're you're quick to react at the moment. If there's anything going on in your finances, you're, you're quick to take action, which is a good place to be because people are noticing how good your communication is, but also how quick you are to follow things up. Seven of Swords reversed. Yeah, you come across as very reliable and trustworthy. So I wouldn't be surprised if you give other people advice with their finances as well. So let's have a look at what your main blockages are with money now. We have the full moon coming out. So as a blockage, this energy can be about releasing, letting go, 
and observing the emotions attached to what you're trying to let go of so that you can work through those feelings instead of suppressing them and pretending they don't exist only for them to come back and hit you with full force later. So emotions could be something that are blocking your ability to move forward. There could be a conflict here with your some of your emotional connections or with your emotional interests. If you didn't have to worry about this, then you could just sort of move forward full force towards what you want. A sentimental attachment could be a blockage, but ultimately this energy is about being able to just release. This card could also be talking about your fears, which I don't think are proper blockages. I just think that they're something that could be holding you back a little bit. So let's have a look properly with tarot. What are group two's main blockages right now? What are group two's main blockages? Okay, we have the emperor showing up upright. What are group two's main blockages? Right now, please, spirit. We have the Hierophant. So we got two major arcana, four and five. What are group twos? Thank you, spirit. We have the Ten of Wands again in the reverse position again. That's why I like using different decks because we can see these similarities popping up. What are their main blockages? Group two. Okay, we have the lovers card. So we've got four, five, and six showing up. I want to say one of your main blockages is just being able to move forward, making the right decisions for yourself because you've got a plan. You have a lot of control. You also have a lot of responsibility. And it's important that you seek advice from the right people and that you make the right commitments moving forward. So a blockage is here is you not feeling 100% confident yet in being able to make those decisions, take those actions and execute your plan because you are weighing up the weight of your responsibilities as well as the risks of what these changes would incur. It's almost like you're just being very careful about your commitments. For other people, previous commitments could be getting in the way of your financial situation. You guys seem to be very responsible people. Again, coming up. The back of the deck is the six of wands again. So your blockages are also prevalent in your main energy. You guys may feel like you have a duty to do things for other people, especially if you're in the public eye in some way. Otherwise, there's some sort of duty here to be successful. And you're really making sure that before you make any decisions, the outcome will lead to success. So you're not just settling for anything that comes your way when we're talking about financial opportunities. I also just think that your finances are stable enough, but the ambitious side of you is craving more. <laughs> that was a weird bit of indigestion. I don't know if you heard that. You probably would have. This microphone is amazing. Um, so a blockage here is about what to release. A cycle has come to its full term but do we just sit here and celebrate or do we start thinking about what we're going to do next because we've already done that so do we start taking actions on what we want to do next or do we just wait and sit in the stability for a little bit longer 
I want to add that you guys do need to be very careful about the advice that you're getting because individual experience is not helpful for you unless it's a professional breaking down the logistical pros and cons somebody's individual unique subjective experience is not going to be helpful for you group two that's not how you make decisions and that's also not how you grow you guys do not need a peer or a colleague to tell you what to do you need your senior boss someone who is beyond your current status who aspires or who is living the life that you aspire i don't mean to belittle anybody in your circle but i do think that other people's concerns are not your concerns and instead of obtaining unhelpful information that will only delay your ability to gain more important and helpful information so just be careful about communicating with peers i do think here you guys want to do something for self but somebody else is holding you back could be a parent a father or a paternal person but overall you feel restricted in what you're able to do because you're thinking of other people and because you're thinking about your other responsibilities so let's have a look at what your main opportunities are now when it comes to money we have aquamarine showing up in this deck it is associated with the number four we have the moon we have that very stretchy yoga pose probably so good for your hamstrings and your lower back and we also have Spadish, not Svadishvana, who's up the top there? Sahasrara, the crown chakra. We also have black tourmaline. So the number 30, Pluto. This is an earthy energy. That was water. Um, and we have the third eye chakra, Ajna, with that yoga pose. So balance seems to be important here. You guys are going to have to purge in order to embrace the new. You have to consider how your expansion is going to require some sort of risk. But in order for this risk to pay off, you also <laughs> need to kind of weigh up what to sacrifice so it's like in order for this risk to pay off you've got to sacrifice some things but yeah okay so i do want to elaborate um i was going to kind of lay your cards like that just so that we're not blocking off too much of the tarot um but it's interesting because you are a group that has multiple opportunities coming to you financially. You're not back against the wall. This is what I have to do. No, you have multiple opportunities coming your way financially. So you don't have to do anything, but you want to do something. And because you set that ambition and you put that intention out there, the universe is trying to reward you. So I do think that one of your opportunities has to do with an emotional connection, a supportive person in your life who is able to help you combat your fears, who is able to um, emotionally sort of offer a support that regulates any concerns you have. This seems to be a very supportive person, like your rock. Your main opportunity when it comes to finances is emotional security because that helps to combat concerns and fears as i've said so it also helps you free up your energy to be able to think bigger because you're not concerned about these emotional concerns you have the capacity to think bigger to be more in tune with what source is showing you and to also be more aware of the opportunities around you you're seeking answers and the answers are seeking you solutions will come to you easily 
If you can just put it out there, I see the universe providing, I see loved ones providing, and I see synchronicities helping steer you through any confusion so that what you need to do becomes more obvious to you. I also think that when it comes to your loved ones, they will be safe. And knowing that they are safe and that they are supported is enough for you to be able to continue developing yourself. Black Tourmaline is a card that I want to elaborate more on though, and I will be getting more tarot like I've been doing. But I do think that your main opportunities come with some sort of sacrifice. We have to transmute and transform our energy in order to be more abundant. Something has to be let go of. But what that thing is will be glaringly obvious when the time comes because it will feel more like dead weight. It won't feel like a genuine sort of like, oh, I love this. Like, why am I giving it up? No, it will feel like it's become almost oppressive. And you may already be in the um, in the process of releasing that oppression with the Ten of Wands of starting to release that burden of responsibility. So let's have a look, Spirit. What are group twos? I wanted to say three because of the 30 here. What are group two's main opportunities? What are group two's main opportunities, spirit? We have the star card reversed. Okay. What are group two's main opportunities, please, spirit? We also have the princess of cups reversed. Okay, we have the Emperor reversed. What are group two's main opportunities? And we have that Ace of Pentacles coming back upright this time. Remember that was there? So a major goal that you've been hoping to achieve is going to come your way. It doesn't seem to come in the way that you expected, but it's just as valuable if not more valuable because it chooses you this time instead of you feeling like it will just escaped it's coming towards you yeah your biggest opportunities when it comes to money are about your sense of purpose being fulfilled you guys are going to feel very passionate about something and this passion is going to drive you towards a very specific direction travel could be involved but you seem to be very excited, very passionate, very interested. And this interest is going to create momentum, a sense of purpose again. You are receiving a new opportunity in your finances, a new job or a new way of earning money. This opportunity is changing other aspects of your life though. The star card reverse tells me that your main opportunities in money are about going back to the drawing board and reevaluating what your goals are because you're ticking a lot of boxes. So once this opportunity comes around, all of a sudden your goals have changed and you might need to reconsider what your drawing board looks like, what your vision board looks like. An opportunity here is you're breaking the glass ceiling in some way, which is really exciting. I'm so happy for you. And your spiritual team is so happy for you too. And that's that individuality I was picking up on before. You don't need to be getting advice from your peers. You're the one that others are aspiring to be group two. So this is a beautiful opportunity. It also seems to be something that you're taking very seriously though, very seriously. So I, my advice would be to take some time to appreciate that this is an achievement and that you can celebrate it. Um, it doesn't have to be so serious all the time. And I also think with the star card reverse, this is going to completely reshape your future. So with the princess of cups reversed, when my pages are reversed, it's an energy of us having outgrown a situation. As an opportunity, emotionally, you have outgrown something here. You're bigger than that. You're more mature than that. You're leaving something behind that you have emotionally outgrown, which tells me this could be a pattern in your lifestyle or a certain social group, a social setting. 
It could even be that you within yourself have matured to the point where you're ready to start taking yourself more seriously. And this is a part of that plan. I do think that for some of you, you don't have to worry as much for loved ones as what you were thinking. I think that they are going to be safe first and foremost but I also think that you have the tendency to take on a lot of responsibility and you may have been feeling responsible for younger family members or for less able family members if that resonates you don't have to worry about them I'm just hearing in general you don't have to worry about them worry about yourself is your main opportunity also the opportunity to meet new people with the page of cups reversed to meet new people completely now with the emperor reversed this is an opportunity for you because this is about shifting control shifting responsibilities and shifting risk i do see this as a positive um down here it was a blockage remember this energy was a blockage so your opportunity is that this isn't going to be a blockage. If you're worried about somebody else, a parent, you, they're not going to be a blockage. If you're worried about your responsibilities, um, they're not going to be a blockage. You will also be letting go of a lot of the control that you have over things that are showing up as blockages. This new opportunity is helping those things feel much less oppressive and you feel a lot less responsible. You guys seem to be noticing that this is a risk that just needs to be taken. I do think it's a positive that it's reversed. With that being said, you guys may also just be in the energy where you're looking forward to the fact that you don't have to control everything. You don't have to be responsible for everything. You can loosen up a little bit, let your hair down, let the wind blow in your face, you know, don't just wind the window up because dust is going to get in the vehicle. So I do think that a lot of this is about having an open mind, having a shift in perspective, a different vision for your future and having this opportunity fall into your lap. So let's see what closing advice I can get for you when it comes to your finances for my group twos. What closing advice, Spirit, do you have for Group 2 when it comes to their money? What closing advice do you have for Group 2? We have happiness coming out in the upright position. Gemini is on this card. We have the number 15, fire element. And this is also the marjoram card in this deck. What other advice do you have for Group 2, please, Spirit, when it comes to their money? What other advice do you have for Group 2? Okay, we're going to take this. It's abundance in the reverse position. This is also the grape card. We also have the number 23. We've got the water element and Sagittarius. Sagittarius, for those that aren't familiar with the way I say it. And we also have divination. So this is the chives card in this deck. We've also got the number 14, Scorpio and the fire element. Those could be significant to you. Back of the deck is communication. So straight away, um, P's could be significant, but I do think that your communication is your greatest asset when it comes to your money. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Don't drop the ball. Follow up. Um, you trust your intuition, especially if you're initiating communication, if you're reaching out and putting yourself out there to gain this opportunity. Trust that intuitive pull and intuitively navigate the communication as well because i'm just seeing you readjusting little things like paperwork right especially if you're doing cover letters think about what would be good to put on there if you're petitioning for some sort of funding or a loan think about what language would be good on there these are your strongest suits so it should just come naturally to you it's something that i hope i'm just confirming more than anything now otherwise I do think with happiness, abundance, and divination, Spirit is saying at the end of the day, make the decisions that are going to make you happy. Make the decisions that are going to make you happy, group two. It's very important that you are observing your choices as a privilege. As much as it feels oppressive, 
These are also your solutions, your ways forward, the way out for some of you. Abundance and divination reverse. You have a lot of information on what you should do already. I believe that this reading is more about confirming that you're on the right path. So yes, group two, you are on the right path. The commitments you've been making towards this goal are going to pay off and any rejections you have experienced were not right for you. It is also healthy for you to start thinking about how you can lessen the load of responsibilities on your shoulders. Be proud of what you have achieved, but definitely keep pushing forward towards your goals. Stay curious, stay open-minded, and keep researching other ways to expand your income or your portfolio. I do think that this is a group that will break a lot of glass ceilings in that the level of abundance you achieve is basically as big as your ambition. If you stay receptive, if you stay open, if you stay hungry for that success, you will have it. But with the divination energy here, it comes with a lot of transformation and it comes with you trusting your instincts, trusting your wisdom and trusting your intuition. I do think that this is a group that is not supposed to be comfortable. You're supposed to constantly feel like you're challenging yourself and you're evolving through the choices that you're making. So that's what I'm seeing for you, group two. I hope this was a helpful reading for you. It's been a pleasure to read for you today. Thank you for trusting me for your mess with your messages. And my mouth is just tired now. <laughs> I appreciate all your energy, your support. Feel free to come back to this reading at any time if you need more support. Um, because we have four groups at a later date, who knows, you might have messages in a different group, but I wish you prosperity, abundance, health, wealth, happiness, success, and joy on your journey ahead. Look after your beautiful selves until our paths cross again. Bye. Hi group three and welcome to your reading. If you chose the Venom card for the first part of your reading, excuse me, we're not doing an extended today. <laughs> if you chose the Venom card for the intro of your reading, then this is going to be your finance and money reading. Now, sweet soul, we're asking spirit, what do you need to know about your money? I do have my list over here of everything that I will be covering today for you. We've got a lot to get through. It's going to be very informative. I'm excited. I actually love these readings. I don't get the chance to do them very often because for some reason, at least for the last four years, these readings don't do well. So it does impact my channel. And I've had to think about that when growing this beautiful community. So I'm so grateful to be able to have this opportunity to do this reading for you. It is my goal to get as much helpful information about your money, which includes your finances, your career, your aspirations to boost your income or to pay off debt. We will see what comes through for you, group three. And there is going to be no extended, so I'm going to try to get as much info as we can right here on YouTube. So make sure you have something to take notes with so that you're writing down what resonates as well as what doesn't resonate, just in case it resonates at a later date. So starting with the Venom card, this card is telling me that a lot of you guys need to know that your money is going to, um, there's going to be some sort of issue or challenge that highlights to you a cleansing needs to take place this card is about something temporarily harmful that brings awareness to the fact that there is toxicity there is um, some sort of harmful habit or harmful situation that is limiting your growth as well as impacting your health so when it comes to your finances, this energy is specifically about recognizing how this harmful situation or habit is stopping you from being able to live the lifestyle that you want, as well as achieve the money goals that you have. So that can be a very jarring message to get straight off the cuff, sweet soul. So before I continue, I'm going to pull some tarot cards and let's get some specific messages for you. What does group, which deck should I use? We'll use this deck. What does group 
three need to know about their money spirit? What does group three need to know about their money? We have the Ten of Wands reversed. This is a good sign. Ten of Wands reversed for you is definitely about purging, letting go, unburdening. We have the Three of Cups reversed. Spirit, what is this Venom card about for my group threes? We have the Nine of Pentacles reversed. And we have the Five of Wands upright. The back of the deck is the Hierophant. And Group 3, I do have my fan on. Um, it's very hot to where I live. It's hot like 90% of the time. Um, I do have the aircon on and the fan just to kind of combat some of that heat because it's like 40 degrees Celsius here. So if there is any background interference with the microphone, I'm going to try to scrub that out. But just in case you are hearing some things, I just wanted to let you know what's happening. Okay, so with that aside, what do you need to know about your money? It looks like your money situation is going to be changing. But the way that I see these changes is actually very beneficial. So I want you to know that whatever this habit or situation is with the Venom card, you're well aware of it. All right. It's not going to blindside you. It's not going to surprise you. It's not an issue that you haven't already noticed. The Venom card is about you trying to get that energy out of your life, making a change to your habits so that you can positively impact your financial situation or making changes to your job so that you can be in a better place where you're not feeling overworked. It seems like you need to know that reducing the amount of responsibility is what is best for you when it comes to your finances in general. Some of you are not employed full time or you may be in a situation where you don't need to work to gain income. It's still very important that you're very selective about your responsibilities right now. This is coming from a space of burnout and looking after other aspects of your life. It feels like your work is overpowering, or at least up until recently, it was overpowering other areas of your life. You also need to be wary of giving too much to other people, whether that's favors or loans or just, you know, having to provide for other people. You need to be very careful about taking on too many responsibilities, which includes also feeling financially responsible for other people. There is this energy here of unburdening, releasing, and ultimately just purging unhelpful patterns of behavior, habits around money that aren't helping you and your own household, as well as situations that aren't beneficial for you and your own household. I can see with the Hierophant that the changes you are or have recently experienced in your money situation have been about strengthening a sense of commitment to self and forging better habits on how you can use your income better for self. It feels like you have certain things that you are also paying off and we need to kind of reset that income slash expenses balance. It's like we're, we were up until recently spending much more than we were making so I do think that moving forward, you need to stick to those goals, stick to any habits that you've made for yourself. And this card is also encouraging you to get financial advice if you've been thinking about it. The Hierophant is a card of seeking structure, of seeking some sort of balance through conformity, maybe um, entering some sort of plan or talking to a professional about a deposit plan so that you can hit your savings goals and reset your expenses slash income um, ratio so that you can reduce the amount of things that you are paying for right now. I think a professional would help you to do this very efficiently, 
but I do think that you are very capable of doing that yourself as well. So it's just about what you're comfortable with. Sometimes the Hierophant is about using a tool to be able to really work out where is all my money going right now and what can I cut back on. It's coming from a place of restoration. You are a group that is trying to purge unhelpful habits, circumstances and situations when it comes to your money so that we can restore that savings fund as well as that savings goal. It feels like you are either paying something off or you're prepping to have money to be able to do something in the near future. And I can see this being achievable. However, it's very important that you don't get distracted by other people. It seems that a lot of your money is going impulsively on short-lived experiences. If you don't resonate with that line, this card just talks about peer pressure and your friends and people in your social circle having that influence on you when it comes to your money. It feels like you do need to start taking your money a little bit more seriously. Um, this reading has been very, very serious for you, Group 3. We did not come in to play today. Spirit wants you to know that there could be people around you who have a harmful impact on your spending habits. Friends is what's specifically coming up. Um, but also just limiting the amount of times that you go out as well or, or limiting how much you spend when you go out. I do, I personally am a firm believer in spending money on experiences over um, material items so I can understand why it's important for you to want to spend your money that way and to be honest you're allowed to spend your money however you want. But if you do want to hit your savings goal and if you do want to pay off some of the things that you've been working on or put money towards the things that you've been working on, you are going to need to be more serious and careful about what you spend when you go out and about how other people influence you to spend your money. With the Nine of Pentacles reversed, I do think that this card is reminding you of self-security, self-sufficiency, and financial freedom. This could be goals that you have for yourself already, but right now, these are things that seem to be worked, work, you seem to be working on. These are themes that are developing in this group. You don't have a full grasp on those things yet as it stands. Spirit is highlighting the fact that with the Nine of Pentacles reversed, you may not be where you want to be financially, either because of the, your position in terms of what you have in your bank account or in your asset portfolio, or because of the work that you do. Some of you are wanting more financial freedom. You feel restricted or limited by your health, or you feel restricted or limited by where you live, by the fact that you may not have a car. There's something very practical or physical that is limiting your ability to feel successful financially. And for most of you, it's something that I think isn't necessarily a complete blockage. There are ways around it. There are ways to, for you to be able to get to where you need to be while also considering the material or physical constraints that you're working with. With the five of wands here, we're going to get more information about this too, by the way. These are just the key themes that we're seeing in your money right now, but we have a lot to get through. We're also going to be highlighting your main opportunities and your main blockages and getting advice. So I promise I won't just leave that there. But with the five of wands here, the last thing in this part of your reading that you need to know is that your money situation is definitely something that is more challenging when you do compare yourself to other people. Sorry, group three, slight interruption there. Um, I just had to deal with that and come back so we have the rest of the reading together. But as I was saying, this five of wands is a strong energy of feeling like you're comparing your circumstances to somebody else and feeling challenged as though you need to prove yourself this could also feel like you need to make changes to prove that you are good enough to do something, or you may feel like somebody else is challenging you to make changes. So I do think that your financial situation 
is experiencing some stress and these stresses are easily worked through, which is a wonderful thing. And these stresses are about making things simpler, working smarter, not harder. So let's move forward. We're going to have a look at what your current energy towards money is. And we have the butterfly card coming out for you. So intuitively, I feel like your current energy towards money is transformative. This is an, uh, an air energy. So this is about thinking about solutions, thinking about changes. Your energy towards money is that you are trying to keep an open mind. And I also feel like you're trying to be very reactive. If you need to do something, I feel like you are trying to make sure that you do it. You're not standing in your own way and you're also out here seeking solutions. So I do believe that this is a really good energy, but sometimes this energy is easily distracted as well. And this energy struggles to stick to things. So let's get some cards out. And then I'm going to also read from the guidebook to see what other messages we can get about that card. For my group threes, please, Spirit. What is group three's current energy towards money? What is group three's current energy towards money? Okay. We have the Queen of Pentacles coming out upright. This is Capricorn energy. What is group three's energy? We have the Lover's card reverse, some Gemini energy. We also had Taurus come out before. What is group three's current energy? We have Aries energy with the Emperor. Someone could be an Aries Taurus cusp or a, um, what's that? Taurus Gemini cusp. What is group three's? We have Leo now. So a lot of fire signs. And at the back of the deck is another fire sign with the Wheel of Fortune. This is Sagittarius and Pisces energy. So your current energy towards money. Okay, so this is what I see. Your current energy towards money. Overall, there is a positive change in fortune for you. In order to embrace this positive shift, you do have to reconsider how you're investing your energy, but you mostly need to think about what is of value to you right now. What is it that you're trying to build? Is money important to you or is something else important to you? And money is just the tool that you're using to gain that something else. It also feels like you don't need to necessarily rush to be financially successful right now. It seems like you may need to be very stoic and, and careful with this emperor energy about your decisions, which could also look like you having a look at what your responsibilities are versus what your desires are. It seems that you can have both. You can take care of your responsibilities, you know, whatever you need to do while also pursuing something that you want to do. But it's going to require a level of control. It's going to require you to be very accountable and to be able to balance all of that. I do think that you've got some important decisions to make and these important decisions don't just impact you. You're going to have to talk to somebody else about these decisions, about these ideas, so that you can figure out what you want to do and what is in your best interest at the end of the day. But it seems like your decision weighs on somebody else's opinion and what they think of you or what they're able to offer you as well. This could be that person that you're seeking advice from, or this could be a new commitment that you're thinking of making. Let's have a look at that butterfly energy now. We have dragonfly. Where's the butterfly? Is it at the start? There it is. Okay, I'm gonna show the card to you in case you wanna pause it and read it for yourself, but I am gonna read it out to you as well. So this is butterfly. It's about as close as I can get it. <laughs> okay, so butterfly. The butterfly is about undergoing great change and transformation. The energy of the butterfly is with us during periods of transition. 
Since air is the element of the heart, this change usually involves relationships or if you love your job, perhaps your career. Since transition is accompanied by some amount of discomfort, be extra patient and kind during this time, especially if the butterfly is you. Let solid friends and activities support you like a cocoon. Committing to one daily routine, a meal, practice or prayer done at the same place and time will do wonders for lifting a butterfly's spirit. When in balance, this energy is cheerful and grateful, excuse me, graceful. To bring into balance, practice a daily routine. So there's that Taurus energy, that Emperor energy as well. But the Hierophant, a daily routine. I do think that the transformations with your money are about being able to be, being able to have habits that support your goals um, and considering the habits that you already have in place that aren't supporting your goals. But I do think that this isn't something you should do by yourself. It seems that whatever changes are undergoing in terms of your money, whatever changes are happening to your finances, to your career goals, it's really about you being able to have that balance that you want, using your money to support other changes in your life, using your income to support other transformation. So there's also this line that really stood out to me, let solid friends and activities support you like a cocoon. It seems that it's about the company that you keep as well and making sure that you're surrounded by people who also support your goals and people who want the same things as you seems to be very important in you feeling confident. So I do think that your attitude towards money is quite healthy. If I can say that, like, I don't see any concerns. You may be feeling a bit confused or indecisive over what you should do next, but I don't think you have any reason to be concerned because of the wheel of fortune. Ultimately, this card is about the universe having your back. Divine timing is at play and underneath that is the magician. So whatever you choose to do, you'll do it well, group three. Whatever you choose to do, once you put your head to it, you're going to achieve it. And the universe is going to work with you. You have good fortune backing your efforts, which means it's ultimately about you deciding what opportunities you want to go after and where you want to invest your energy, what you would like to commit to. I do see changes impacting your finances, but I think that these changes are helpful. These changes balance your lifestyle out and these changes support the goals that you're working towards. So let's have a look at what your main blockages are now. We have the astrology card for that. And in astrology, you've got Gemini reverse. So your main blockages are stemming around awareness of information. You guys may be feeling limited by information. You may feel like you don't know everything yet. You don't have all the answers yet. You may even feel like it's hard for you to talk to other people about what you're going through because other people either can't relate to your circumstance or they can't give you the advice that you want to hear as well. I do think with Gemini reversed, this is an energy of curiosity. So one of your main blockages could be that you don't know how to develop a new idea or a situation, or you just don't know what is happening next. There's still a lot of curiosity and intrigue around this but let's get some tarot to clarify what is group three's main blockage with their money right now what is group three's main blockage with their money we have the ten of wands upright We also have the death card upright. We have the five of pentacles. I'm going to run out of room here. Let's move that over. What else can you tell us? Spit it. I'm going to put that over there. Eh. Okay. What is group three's main blockage? We have the Emperor reversed. And I just saw 2222 on my camera. At the back of the deck is the moon. 
So we're seeing Aries again. We're also seeing Scorpio and now we have Cancer as well. Well, that sounds weird to say out loud. We have the sign of Cancer as well. And of course, a Gemini, but Gemini was here before. So strong Gemini energy, strong Aries energy. Now, your main blockages when it comes to your money and being able to use your money for the things that you want to use it on is ultimately feeling like you don't have a good control on things. You don't have a solid foundation to be able to make the plans that you want. You guys may even be feeling like your plans have recently changed. It seems that the foundation is a little um, transmutable right now or changeable. You guys may be feeling like there are changes to your stability that are impacted by your money or there's been a change in career or a change in um, location that has impacted your finances with that being said spirit is saying less is more for this group you guys are doing the most over here with this ten of wands you need to know that your finances and your money situation is going to work out but you don't need to over do it here by trying to do too much at once, by trying to overcommit yourself or really sort of push yourself. For some of you, this is about taking on too much financial responsibility. Don't do it. If you have the choice, don't take on too much financial responsibility right now. For others of you, this is very much about working smarter, not harder. If you have the opportunity, try to seek employment that is more flexible and beneficial to your other goals instead of juggling more than one job if you have that luxury but it does seem like your main blockage is just you doing too much you're overdoing it you're putting too much effort into something that is not paying off as much as it should be when it comes to your money specifically don't overdo it. Your main blockage here is not having the right information, which is why it would either be beneficial for you to have a conversation with a professional or for you to do more research online to be able to have the right information so that you're not putting yourself in a harmful position. I think your health is very important, but I think this is also about being able to have energy to invest in other areas of your life, group three, so that not all of your energy is going towards working or saving money or spending money. I do think that a blockage here is a fear. There is this energy of fear here. And the truth is your circumstances are changing as we speak. So those changes are naturally going to impact your financial situation because they are impacting your stability. They are impacting your ability to plan, your ability to control things. When we experience changes, there's only so much we can control just as in any given situation. So I do think that as the situation for you develops further, as the changes develop further, you're gonna have more of an understanding of what is to come, of what you need to be prepared for, and of how to invest your resources. Right now, you're stressing out over things that you shouldn't be stressing out about. And I know that that's easier said than done. Stress is something that me telling you not to stress probably doesn't help it go away, but I hope that it comforts you in knowing that you guys are stressing about certain things that you don't need to stress about. Remember, you have that good fortune, that wheel of fortune energy. A major blockage is you trying to be overprepared for things that are very, very natural. They're going to naturally fall into place. With this five of pentacles, I do believe that a blockage here is being careful about owing money so just if you can be very careful about owing money because the changes that you make to your financial situation are temporarily tight 
This five of pentacles is a temporary energy of having to really watch what you spend until you can get to a place of stability and of being able to feel more balanced and ready to maybe take on a loan or to owe money. But until you're at that moment, don't seek out a loan or put yourself in a worse position for instant gratification. Don't, you know, look for a solution because you're desperate. Because I do think that you will be taken advantage of in that way. So stay away from short-term loans for now if you can. And trust that your financial situation is improving. This transformation is happening so that you can get to that stage where you're more balanced and where you have more options. So you're not just going to the only person who can lend you money. You're then able to go to other vendors and go, well, hey, this is my situation. This is where I'm at. This is what I want. What can you do for me? Just letting you know I'm going to be talking to other people as well. You're not my only option. I think you guys need to be very careful of putting yourselves in dire straits financially due to habits or spending that you're not tracking little transactions that add up and accident accidentally going into the negatives and not having money to pay the water bill or the gas bill and then having to borrow two hundred dollars from a short vendor to be able to do that just be very very careful because it's it's all part of the process those sort of um that short change in, in feeling like you need to be very frugal temporarily but it doesn't have to be a worsening situation or something that becomes worse before it gets better if that makes sense so that's what i'm seeing in terms of your main blockages let's have a look at your main opportunities before we get some advice so for you guys i got the garnet card here and in this deck the garnet card is associated with the number 13 we also have sagittarius fire the third eye chakra and this yoga pose down the bottom. Um, intuitively, what I'm feeling with that card is that you have a lot of good fortune coming your way. Sagittarius again, sweet soul. This is where I like to do the blockages first because we want to hear the bad news so we can get to the good news, right? It's not all bad for you, sweet soul. You have some good fortune coming your way. And this good fortune is also about a shift in your perspectives, in your desires. I do feel like what you want has changed and you may need to really reconsider some of your short-term goals when it comes to how you want to spend your money. It seems that you guys will be experiencing something very exciting, very passionate, that makes you want to do things a little bit differently, that makes you want to kind of get out of the, the what you've been doing and reinvest your energy in a different way. This garnet energy is talking about being a, a little bit more um, open and flexible and adaptable as well. So I do see garnet as a very abundant crystal because it is connected to December babies. But um, it's also this energy of going with the flow and, and trusting the process especially if you've already started a transformation with your finances and in your material world. So let's get some tarot here. So I'm not just throwing out general vague terms. Let's get more specific spirit. What is this garnet energy about for my group threes? What is this garnet energy about? Group threes. What is their main opportunities when it comes to money? Okay, we have the seven of wands reversed. What is their main opportunities? We have the five of cups reversed. We also have the queen of swords upright. Oops, okay. We have the Ten of Wands as well as the 
Eight of Pentacles. Okay, there's that work smarter, not harder card. I also think that you guys have the opportunity to develop something even further with your money, to do something here that feels like a career or a portfolio or a um, mastery sort of like uh, uh, the next step in your in your career goals like there seems to be development here not just a job but a career and being able to carve out a sense of financial prosperity um you guys may be learning and developing under somebody else's guidance sorry i have a really itchy leg i don't know if you can hear that um but I do think that for a lot of you, you'll do this yourself. You'll do the research yourself. You'll do the work yourself and you'll be proud of yourself. Um, so when it comes to opportunities, it does feel like you're trying to prove yourself to somebody else. It feels like you've got a lot to prove. You guys may feel like an underdog. It may feel like you're really out of your depths here. When it comes to money, it could feel like, you know, I've experienced some adversity, some challenges. So... I'm not going to be too attached. I'm just going to put myself out there and I'm going to try. I do think that your opportunities are not as difficult as you may be prepared for. Like maybe you guys are assuming that things are going to be pretty tricky or difficult. But I can see with the seven of wands that actually it's probably going to be your opportunities when it comes to money are going to come easily. When that seven of wands is reversed, it's like a reward that you didn't even have to fight for. It's like a, a feeling like something is finally paid off and you, because you're not even really thinking about it anymore. You originally wanted it and now it's here and you're like, wow, this is not what I originally expected. Did I show you at the back of the deck was the nine of wands? So I do think that you've put a lot of energy into your financial situation and i do think that it's going to pay off i think that any time that you put into your workplace any time that you put into saving money making money is going to pay off but i also think that money is something you're using for other experiences so i can see you putting investing your money into a lot of different experiences group three I can also see an opportunity here to turn a situation around with your finances. The five of cups reverse, you're avoiding disappointment by recovering from a situation that feels like emotional loss. Instead of feeling like that situation is a loss to you, you're turning around and you're going, well, at least I can still do this now. You know, instead of just focusing on that, I've got this and this left. So I do think that some of your biggest opportunities is you feeling more optimistic in general and this is positively impacting your finances you guys are just going to feel like you have more choices than what you originally had i can also see a very specific situation here in which a loved one helps to offer you a sense of direction because it feels like this loved one isn't able to really help you practically or physically but they say something to you that really comforts you and makes you go, yeah, you know what? It could be a lot worse. And this change in mindset is enough for you to turn around and go like, wow, I'm just going to pick myself up and try again. Have a look at other things. Figure this out from a different angle. I do think that any challenges you're currently working through are going to be kind of highlighting the fact that you need to reconsider what your goals are and how you want to spend your money because you're only experiencing challenges as a form of redirection. These challenges are trying to redirect your attention as well as your focus so that you don't get distracted by what other people are doing and by what you thought you wanted. You need to kind of go back to the drawing board a little bit and think to yourself, well, well how do I even want to spend my money? What do I even want to do? And then all of a sudden, when you change what you want to do, those challenges aren't challenges anymore. It was only challenging because your goal was challenging. So with the Queen of Swords here, I do think that another opportunity for you is somebody saying something to you that helps you feel more informed, like you have another piece to the puzzle. You can take a step back and look at your life and go, yeah, that makes a lot more sense now. I know what I want to do. It's like you guys are waiting to hear something from somebody else or somebody else's opinion 
or somebody else's information really matters to you because then you can kind of go back to your own life and go, okay, this is what I want to do. But you're waiting to hear it from somebody else. This could be a lover because this card has two people kissing in the background. But it could also be that professional again, just saying like, hey, if that's what you want to do, this is my advice. I do think that the Queen of Swords is an opportunity to take a step back, to look at the bigger picture, to reevaluate timelines of when you want certain things to happen and to kind of look into solutions and opportunities. And I do think that this is going to be a very helpful process. It's not stressful. Your opportunities don't feel stressful at all. Even with the nine of wands here, the nine of wands is like a reward saying because of your effort, because of your interest, because of the fact that you don't give up easily when it's something that you really want, we're going to make this easier for you so that you don't feel like an underdog and so that you don't experience any more loss. The transformations that you've been going through, the changes that you've recently been through are paying off. And it's going, you're going to get more awareness about what that payoff looks like and about how those changes have helpfully contributed to the bigger picture for you and to some really good career growth for you as well, or some financial growth. But do consider ways to work smarter, not harder. Whatever you put in is what you will get out though. You have Saturn really wanting to reward you for your hard work and for the fact that you are a doer. When you put your mind to something, you really, really give it your all. So if you don't know too much about Saturn, I highly recommend that you do some Googling because it is often <laughs> the planet of karma the planet that a lot of people don't like but it's actually working with jupiter to deliver you results for your hard work and jupiter is here too multiple times to say that it, you don't have to work that hard but we still want to reward you because you are somebody that likes to work hard so really this group in summary before i get your closing advice is very much about First of all, establishing what your money goals are. How do you want to spend your money? What do you want money for? Because you don't need to be working all the time. You should not be spending every spare minute of your time working. You are in a period of transformation where there's been a lot of different changes happening to you in your life. And the way that you make money is also changing. The way that you spend money is also changing. And the way that you choose to save money or to use money is also changing. So in this period of transformation, gather, gather as much information as you can. Have the important conversations that you need to have so that you can take a step back and have a look at the bigger picture of where your life is right now and of where you want to be. If needed, do not hesitate to seek professional advice and make sure that you're not letting other people negatively impact your finances through peer pressure or through little instant gratification moments. I do think that you've recently made a lot of changes and these changes are paying off. In the immediate future, you will see confirmation that those changes were necessary. In the next three months, there's going to be a huge shift in goals for you. You guys are going to be deciding that something is very different for you now and you want to use your money to work on something different. It's, it's a huge shift in experiences for you. And the universe is working with you to deliver opportunities so that you never feel limited by what is available to you. If you can dream it, you can have it type of thing. But it's very much about an experience and using money to gather an experience. So let's get that closing advice now. Spirit, what is the closing advice for group three? When it comes to their money... 
What is the closing advice for group three? We have affection, the sorrel card in the reverse position. In this deck, it's also associated with Taurus, the number 12, and the fire element. At the back of the deck is stimulation, the chili card. Cute. So a lot of fire here for this group. I believe that spirit is saying life is too short. You guys are moving forward in a new direction, which is going to offer you new experiences. I highly encourage you to embrace those experiences and to make sure that you're not limiting your abilities to have the things that you want. I feel like you guys are ambitious. I can also see a lot of passion, a lot of desire, a lot of creation. Something is happening that is kind of giving you a new idea or a new look on life like you guys are just looking at things very differently and you're very excited about this so your advice is to kind of follow that passion to follow that stimulation to follow that interest that desire that new road that you've already kind of committed yourself to it is going to pay off in the long run and i can also see with affection reversed you guys do need to consider how your little habits are contributing to your overall goals and to your overall desired outcomes. It's like all these little things do add up. With that being said, I do think that you guys need to balance your life out and consider how you can give yourself more experiences, especially surrounding connection, especially surrounding experience, like being able to try things and do things that you've always wanted to. I think that you need to find ways to make money work for you, group three, so that you're not just working for money. My last advice for you is to really focus more on the little things and on how you can do those things without spending a lot of money. Sentimental moments, experiences that don't cost an arm and a leg. Taurus has a real bougie side to it. A lot of the earth energy does, but with all this fire, the universe is encouraging you to go for what you want without breaking your bank. There is a way to do that as well, to consider little thrifty things that you can do, little habits, little changes that lead to bigger rewards or bigger savings. Um, and you might not be able to fully achieve some of those things without collaborating with somebody else or asking somebody else for their help or using that helpful tool to really understand where all your money is going and then researching ways to save money in those specific places. Um, but that's what I'm seeing for you, my group threes. I hope this was a helpful reading for you. I hope we were able to tick some of that information off the list in terms of confirming what you already know. But I also hope that I was able to fill in the gaps and give you some new information that was really helpful. Um, if you feel like this reading didn't resonate 100%, you may have messages in another group as well, or you may need a general guidance reading as well. I do a lot of those on this channel, so have a look and see if anything stands out on my videos page. But otherwise, thank you so much for all of your time, your energy, and your support in this video. It's been a pleasure to read for you. I wish you prosperity, abundance, health, wealth, happiness, joy, and success on your journey ahead. Look after your beautiful selves, group three, and I shall connect with you in another video. Bye. Hi group four and welcome to your reading. Oh my gosh, I just got so excited to see you guys. You guys are my group. There's a group in every video that I feel is a best friend or somebody that I know personally. So you're that group for some reason. <laughs> I'm so glad I did your group now. I was only gonna do three. And then I decided, you know what, let's do four. We've got the ability to, let's do it. So welcome group four. If you chose the prayer card in the intro of this reading, then this is going to be your money reading today. Welcome group four. We're asking spirit, what do you need to know about your money? This is inclusive of your finances, your career, your money goals. I've got a lot to cover. I have a piece of paper over here that has a lot of helpful prompts written down. 
My goal is to get as much information for you as possible. So I highly recommend that you have something to take notes with so that you're writing down what comes through. If something does resonate, because in general readings, it could just be a quick phrase that I say on the fly. So if it does resonate, write it down, think about it, think about how that is helpful towards your money situation. And if it doesn't resonate, but it sticks out for some reason, write it down as well, because it may make sense at a later date. So starting off your reading, we're going to be using these Oracle cards that I've pre-shuffled, but I will be clarifying each of these cards with tarot to help us get clear, specific messages. The first card I want to talk about is this prayer card. So this card is actually telling us what you need to know about your money right now. This prayer card is saying that something that you've been requesting or praying for or manifesting actively is paying off. This is also a prompt encouraging you to make that manifestation list if you've been considering doing it. The next full moon could be very significant for you. That's when I manifest. Um, but I do think that this prayer card is about a manifestation paying off, the universe hearing your prayers, God, source, whatever the title is, hearing your prayers, the creator hearing your prayers. So I want to clarify that with tarot. Let's have a look. Spirit, what is the prayer card about for my group fours? What is the prayer card about? Oh, look at that. Stray card for my group for spirit. What is the prayer card about for my group fours? We have the lovers card coming out upright. What is the prayer card about? We also have the ace of pentacles upright. We have the Five of Swords upright. What is this prayer card about for my group four spirit? We have the Queen of Swords upright, a uh, reverse, sorry. <laughs> and at the back of the deck is the Three of Wands reversed. Interesting. What does my group fours need to know about their money? It seems there is a redirection happening. You guys are shifting your focus from one thing to another. You're receiving a new opportunity to make money. You need to make a decision about whether or not to take this opportunity. It might not be a brand new job, but for a lot of you it is. It could be a new opportunity within a current position, if that makes sense. I do think that you're going to be making decisions that will impact your finances. You need to consider how big decisions you're making about your lifestyle, about your relationships are impacting your finances. There is this feeling here of um, killing two birds with one stone. So being able to achieve two goals simultaneously or using your finances to achieve another goal. Saying yes to this opportunity means you also get to have that as well. Eat it, having your cake and eating it too. There is this feeling of you guys being able to achieve two things at once in general. I also see a connection playing a role in your finances. Doesn't have to be a lover, but it probably is for a lot of you. The role that this connection is playing is that it's offering you solutions. It's offering you other options, which is helping you reevaluate the way that you spend your money and the way that you earn your money. You also need to know with the Five of Swords that you should not be afraid of, of walking away from something in order to obtain something better. I see the Five of Swords being a change, 
in perspective overall, but it starts as a change of actions, choosing to walk away from a situation, especially from a situation where there is peer pressure. The Five of Swords can sometimes feel like what we're doing isn't positively impacting our friendships or our, our colleague connections, but you have to do what is right for you in that situation. You have to choose what is best for you, even if it feels like you're kind of leaving other people to stew in that energy. Queen of Swords reversed with the prayer. Hmm. There's that shift in perspective. The Queen of Swords, when it's reversed, is very nitpicky. So it could feel like you guys are either distracted or you're over fixated, like hyper fixated on your money, on your finances. Yeah, the Queen of Swords reverse can feel very um, cold, argumentative, judgmental. Especially with the Three of Wands reverse, this is interesting. I do think that there's somebody around you, like an acquaintance or a friend who, who you may need to be distancing yourself from because they have a negative impact on your money. I also think that you just need to be more subjective when you think about how you're spending your money. Other people, like someone close to you or like someone around you who you talk to regularly could be saying, well, you should do this, you should do that. You need to do this next, you need to do that. We don't need to do anything. You've just got to really think about what you want to do and separate your own opinion from other people's. Spirit is saying you need to be more pacific on oh, my days. That could be a something that you guys resonate with. Does someone around you say pacific instead of specific? I never... I think the last time I said that was like when I was a child. But... Spirit is saying you do need to be more specific about how you're spending your money and about what you want to do with your money. Three of Wands reverse, shifting your focus from one thing to another. We're not waiting anymore. We're not sort of just throwing it out there and waiting to see what happens. We're going to be very carefully specific about how we move forward with our money. Okay. So those are the themes and what's going on with your finances right now. Let's move forward. We're going to elaborate by having a look at what your current energy towards money is. So we have the otter card. So <laughs> the otter is a cute little energy. I do know a lot about this card because I used to pull it a lot for myself and for people that I was reading for. However, it's more of an energy of companionship and playfulness. So you guys may be using your money to create moments of playfulness with a companion or even just for self. Using your money on your hobbies, your interests. You guys may also have somebody in your life where like the two of you are mutually investing money in each other. But there is this energy of you using money to be able to experience the things that you enjoy doing and bringing more joy to your life through the way that you invest your money or spend your money. Let's get some tarot to clarify. Spirit, what is group four's energy towards money right now? This also feels like you're not really too worried about money. You're just making money to kind of use it or you have your your money that you're putting aside you're not too worried we have the empress coming out upright we also have the six of wands upright group four please spirit what is group four's current energy towards money okay we have the Six of Cups reverse. There's that energy of a companion again, a partner. <clears throat> two sixes. We also have the Two of Swords and look who's at the back of the deck. The Queen of Swords reversed again. 
So, Seven of Pentacles. Yeah, okay. Spirit is saying when it comes to your energy towards money, there is this feeling of being patient about the changes that you're making or about starting a new opportunity and getting to see the rewards. It might take a little while, especially if this is a brand new opportunity with the Ace of Pentacles. We don't need to rush the process, but we do need to be realistic about um, time frames so that we're setting ourselves up with realistic expectations. If you guys feel like you've been waiting for too long, you're going to get impatient, you're going to get restless, and you're going to do things that sabotage the progress that you've made. With the Queen of Swords reversed, your attitude towards money is that you are spending money the way that you want to spend it. I feel like you have a lot of autonomy. I feel like your money is your money. You don't need to worry too much. <clears throat> You don't need to worry too much about what other people think or what other people want you to do. For the most part, you guys seem to be very abundant. Um, I would be very confused if you're worried about money. This is not my group that's worried. You guys have some nest eggs. You've got some assets or you've got some long-term plans. And you are currently feeling very abundant and prosperous. You're feeling very secure you also have very healthy habits with money. That means that you don't need to stress. You have a comfortable budget for yourself or a comfortable lifestyle for yourself. I'm also seeing a lot of opportunity to feel proud. So when it comes to your attitude towards money, it feels like you feel you should be feeling at least very proud of what you've made. So I can see here that People are also recognizing you as an abundant person. People that you don't know very well, but people that know you well too. See you as somebody that's very financially abundant. You're somebody that probably other people look up to. Other people may even go to you and ask you for money. Um, within a public space, you're being recognized as successful. I do think that your energy towards money is that money works for you. You use money as you want to, and you have money for the things that you want to do. You are using money to take care of other people in some way, whether that is to pay off an asset so that somebody else can inherit it as a long-term goal, or whether that is because you are at a point in your life where you have the money to be able to help out a loved one or to kind of contribute money towards a loved one's future. You guys come across as charitable in some way, but you also come across as sentimental with your money. Very sentimental. You use money to create sentimental moments, sentimental experiences. Your love language could be like acts of like giving and gifts, but it is also this energy of like, creating closeness with the money that you make. You might use money to bring your loved ones closer towards you or everyone together. I do think that right now you're using money to bring somebody closer to you, a loved one, a companion. When it comes to money, it feels like you're not too concerned about what's happening next. You're just following a process that you've been doing because it has been working for you. You have no reason to be worried or to change things. You're just doing what you've been doing. I don't see a lot of concern here. I do think that you're someone that's always thinking about, well, how can I, you know, what could I do to improve or to make things a little bit more lucrative? But it doesn't come out of a space of needing to. For the most part, money comes to you quite easily. And when you do think about the changes you should be making, it's more about expansion and it's more about growth and long-term growth. How can I make this last longer? So that's your current energy towards money. It seems very healthy to me. You seem like one of the more um, money fluent groups compared to the others. Like money does seem to, I don't know if you're just humble, if you're trying to kind of be humble about it or if you just want confirmation, but Money seems to be working for you, group four. So let's have a look at what your main blockages are when it comes to money now. We have the ninth house coming out in the reverse position. So really what I'm seeing here is that your biggest blockage would be 
I don't know. That's hard to say that that's a blockage though. I don't, it's not like you seem to have many blockages. I'm going to have to clarify straight away because I don't want to accidentally say the wrong thing. So what is group four's main blockages? What are group four's main blockages spirit? when it comes to money? What are group four's main blockages? When it comes to money. Eh. Okay. The card just fell on the ground. We have the King of Swords in the upright position. What are Group Four's main blockages when it comes to money? We have the Four of Pentacles reversed. King of Pentacles. <laughs> oh. The Knight of Wands upright. And at the back of the deck is the Nine of Cups reversed. So a one blockage that I'm seeing is that you're good at making money, but you're not good at spending money. So a blockage here is in the choices that you make, the decisions, the strategies, the, um, the fairness. You guys seem to make decisions that are very strict. You guys are very strict on yourselves with your money. This is only a blockage because energetically you're telling yourself that you don't have the money to spend. And that means the universe is going off. They don't have money. They don't have money. So if we look at attraction, a quick way of boosting your income would be to say, I have the money, but I don't want to spend it like that. I have the money, but I don't want to use it that way. I have the money, but I'd rather spend it on this. Instead of saying, well, I don't really have the money for that. When you give it such a negative connotation of restriction, you're telling the universe that you're somebody that doesn't know how to use the resources it wants to give you. So why would it give you more? You have everything you need. You need to work through the challenges first to get to a state of thriving. You're telling the universe you're in survival mode, not thriving mode. So this is a very basic blockage because for the most part, I don't think you have any reason to be stressed, but you just got to be a bit careful about the language you use and about how you think about money. You're someone that's very good at making money, but sometimes you got to spend money to make money and knowing how to invest your money seems to be another blockage. I'm hearing don't just keep it in a bank account. That's not an old wives tale, but before you go and research on YouTube or TikTok, I highly recommend that you look and talk to a financial advisor who can tell you how to invest money to your benefit. Because it seems like there is a smarter way of storing the wealth that you accumulate in this lifetime. There could be a legal process that is very helpful for you as well. Seeking financial advice could be about doing some sort of legal paperwork so that instead of your money sitting with an individual who is getting taxed at this rate, your money can sit under a corporation that is getting taxed at this rate or a family trust that is getting taxed at this rate, a lesser rate. I do think that incorporating your funds in some way could be helpful, even if they are invested in many different ways. Thinking about ways to do it like that could be beneficial for you. But ultimately, your biggest blockage here is about not pursuing creative solutions. Yeah, you guys need to be more creative with how you spend your money. I'm also seeing that like a short trip could be very beneficial to you. Some sort of vacation, nothing less than two weeks. 
no more than I would say 5,000 kilometers. Is that too far? Is 5,000 kilometers far? In Australia, that's not very far. <laughs> like that's just going from one side of the country to the other. Um, but like a short trip could be helpful too, especially if it has to do with saving money on tax. Saving money on tax seems to be a big blockage for you. Your blockages are like boss level blockages. So we're making money, but now we need to figure out how can we keep money? How can we save that money? How can we maximize the money that we're making so that we're not giving so much back or losing so much? Your main blockage is not being able to spend money the way that you deserve to long term. You also need to maybe reconsider who you're getting professional advice from. Getting advice from a new person could be very beneficial from, for you. Getting a second opinion or seeking another accountant or financial advisor or just an investor who kind of supports your vision and is more relevant to the current climate when it comes to the economic climate. Because I do think that you guys need to be careful about trying new things that are very risky with your money. That's why I said avoid YouTube, avoid TikTok, like just go to somebody who is going to be accountable and professional with the advice that they give you. You don't just want to be impulsive and go, I'm going to put it all on this specific cryptocurrency. You don't want to get caught in like a fast trend like that. So that's what I'm seeing mostly for your main blockages. Let's have a look at what your main opportunities are. You guys got two cards for this. We have Amber coming out for you, which is associated with the number 12, 21. <laughs> it's number 21. Uh, we also have Leo, the uh, solar plexus chakra and that yoga pose in the top there. Amber is in the reverse position. And you also have rock crystal group four which is associated with the throat chakra, Vishuddha, that yoga pose. We also have Gemini and the number 15. Okay, I'm going to shuffle cards. Yeah, I'm going to shuffle cards. Group four, please, spirit. What is group four's main opportunities when it comes to money? What are group four's main opportunities? We have the king of swords coming out upright again. What are group four's main opportunities when it comes to money? We have the four of wands reversed. The group four's main opportunities. We have the queen of cups reversed group four. Group four's main opportunities. The three of pentacles reversed. And at the back of the deck is the queen of swords reversed. Okay. I'm just going to have a quick drink of water. Your reading is not taking as long as the other groups, only because you're so straightforward. I just want to highlight that the other groups had um, different energies, <laughs> different, different energies, um, different blockages, different opportunities. So theirs wasn't as straightforward for both of us. We had in terms of as the reader, I had to really navigate a lot more um, information, whereas for you, it just seems to be coming through very straightforward. So if you don't leave this reading feeling well informed, I highly recommend you have a look at one of my guidance readings or you may have messages in a different group as well, because I do feel like I'm mostly confirming things for this group, confirming what your intuition is telling you, confirming what your instincts are telling you, confirming what your wisdom is telling you, because you are somebody who is very good with money. Um, and if you don't resonate with that message, you probably have messages in a different group or this reading just isn't for you, sweet soul. But your main opportunities are really about having a look at how you can gain more and kind of like getting information that that shows you what else is out there 
because this rock crystal is a very curious energy of researching and developing ideas and developing an interest in a new direction as well. You guys could be people who are very intrigued, but cautious and careful. With Amber reversed, there is this feeling of passion, but there is also this feeling of pride. And as an opportunity, this card is about being cautious before you take action. So I see you doing a lot of research before you can confidently take action towards something that you want. The 21st of August or the 21st of July could be very significant for this group, as well as Gemini season. Gemini and Leo season could be very significant for this group. But when it comes to opportunities, I do think that a professional could be very helpful to you. I also think that this King of Swords is representative of a major decision and about bringing more balance to all aspects of your life. You guys could be making a decision in one area of your life and you need to just kind of think about how that's going to impact your money and how your money will fit into that new equation. I do see a lot of balancing. I see you guys kind of running some numbers, doing a pros and cons list, having a look at the accounts, you know, weighing up, you know, how is this going to benefit that? Um, and I do think that you don't have to technically ask anybody else for help. I think you're a very clever person. I think you're very intelligent. I think you're also very wise and you've got good instincts when it comes to money. So a main opportunity here is being able to use your own experiences, your own wisdom, your own instincts to make a calculated decision about what you should be doing next to balance out your lifestyle and to balance out um, your financial situation as well, or to use your money to balance out a financial situation. I definitely can see you kind of having a look at what your next step is and whether it would be beneficial for you to engage in a new contract or a new partnership. Um, you guys may be looking at ways to consolidate things. I do see a lot of paperwork, but paperwork for me is also representative of you having to really think about things and weigh up the pros and cons, maybe reading the fine print before you make a decision to commit your energy and to commit your intentions, your focus into something. So with the four of wands reversed, this energy feels like it's an opportunity because it's a restructuring. You guys may be experiencing temporary instability, but the goal here is expansion. So whatever is feeling destabilized or unstable, it's very temporary. It's just to kind of give you room to continue to grow. There's an opportunity here to make some changes to your household, to your lifestyle that can help you kind of work within a smarter expenditure. So it feels like you guys are having an opportunity here to make adjustments that are more beneficial for you financially, making adjustments in your home, making adjustments with your lifestyle. The Four of Wands could also be talking about that travel. I think that for some reason travel is helpful, short-term travel is helpful for your income. That seems to be a very specific message with a very specific resonance, but for some reason it keeps popping up, so we're going to talk about that quickly. With the Queen of Cups here, Reverse Group 4, another opportunity for you is about weighing up the emotions that you feel. So this is interesting because I think it's somebody else's feelings. That energy of partnership, getting to see what they want and how they feel and what you can do about that. I do think that somebody is gonna be more honest with you about how they've been feeling or feelings will develop and they can be more honest. In this deck, the Queen of Cups has the yin yang symbol on the crown of their head and the King of Swords has the Libra symbol. So there's that energy of balance, partnership and duality. So when it comes to your money, an opportunity here is about balance, duality. I do believe that you're using your money to gain more security emotionally or to gain more experiences emotionally. I also think that this Queen of Cups opportunity is just about seeing how somebody else feels or, 
or knowing how they feel. Spirit, can you clarify the Queen of Cups? Is there anything that I'm missing there? The world, yeah. Getting to the bottom of it, completing a cycle, celebrating, feeling confident about what is to come, feeling more confident about where things are going, understanding more about your own journey because of how somebody else is opening up. You guys are going to be using your money to gain more experiences and achievements, goals. You guys are ticking off bucket list items here, making decisions that really lead to more fulfillment, more connection. Also the start of a new chapter. So you guys may be preparing to spend a lot of money. You may have a new goal because of this Queen of Cups person, you may decide, well, I really want to do this or I, because of this person, I feel like I'm in a position where I can do something like this. I can work towards starting my own business. This is a big goal. I can work towards moving countries. I can work towards studying. I can work towards um, selling my business or selling my house. Doing things that are outside of your comfort zone because you have the ability to, you have the support to. You guys will seem to be in a very strong partnership. And either this is a professional partnership or this is a um, emotional partnership. A personal partnership. Because of that partnership, you're able to do something big and, and start to plan for it and set a goal on how to achieve that and get curious about how to achieve that. With the Three of Pentacles reversed, I think that another opportunity for you or another theme in your opportunities is about being specific and careful about who you invest your resources into. So I think that you guys are consolidating things like bringing all your resources together or working with somebody else to make more money. But you're doing it in a way that is very careful and it's very private. So your current energy towards money, a lot of people have the ability to look at you and to go, wow, look at group four. They're amazing. Look at what everything that they're doing. But an upcoming opportunity is to actually keep more of a lower profile to invest your money more meaningfully and to make money in a more meaningful way as well. To use your money to push yourself outside of a comfort zone that strengthens a partnership or honors a partnership slash contract, which will bring more balance to your life in general. That's what I'm seeing in terms of your opportunities. And you are being very selfless about this. Like there's something about this where you're having to think about somebody else's feelings and what they want and how what they want is what you want as well because of this partnership. And you're trying to think of like, what can I do then to make this person happy because their happiness makes me happy. So let's have a look at your closing advice now, group four. What is the closing advice when it comes to money for group four, please, spirit? We have the Cosletus card coming out reverse. This is the desire card. There's some earth energy here, the number three, and we also have Cancer. At the back of the deck is the Tarragon card, Regeneration, Fire, Aries, and the number 17. Okay, so if we have a look at it, oh, I should have put that down. Sorry, guys. If we have a look at advice with a desire in the reverse position, you guys do need to be aware of how other people's feelings are impacting your choices. This is not necessarily a bad thing, but it is something you need to be mindful of. Your own desires at times seem to take the back burner. You're also somebody who is underestimating your emotional needs right now and how your emotional needs are impacting your money. I do think that you have a lot more emotional desires than you're giving yourself credit for. You're much more of a sentimental or emotional person than you're giving yourself credit for. You need to consider how 
your emotions are eventually going to need more attention and how you may have been neglecting them because of your money situation or just being a little bit more aware of how your money and your emotions are interlaced and could be more connected in the near future. It feels like you will be making decisions about an emotional area of your life. This feels like a relationship and those decisions are going to impact your finances. But it doesn't mean that they're, that's a bad thing. It's just something to be aware of. Your advice with that card reversed is to try to prepare yourself for any of those upcoming situations, especially if you are already with somebody and you can kind of see like things getting more serious or you getting to a stage where you need to like think that way. I just think that this COS card is us realizing that there needs to be a shift eventually in how we are doing things if we want things to continue to grow the way they've been growing. You're coming across as somebody that's very abundant, that has a lot to offer, that's very prosperous, that's ready to sow more seeds. And this strong partnership would not be coming into your life unless it could offer you the same. So I do think that two heads are better than one. I think you and this person have a lot of potential together. But I think you need to evaluate how other aspects of your individual circumstances need to be reevaluated in order to make that partnership work. And maybe it would be better to do a love reading to get more advice on that. But in terms of your finances, I do think that your emotional connections will be leading the choices and the decisions that you make when it comes to your money. With regeneration at the back of the deck, this energy as advice is actually encouraging you to be open to new experiences, to be open to new opportunities with that Ace of Pentacles, to be open to how you can regenerate, how you can continue to evolve. I love that this card is the regeneration card because it's not about giving up. It's about growing from what you've been through, growing from what you've been doing, continuing that process of evolution. You already have a system in place that really works for you. So how can we continue to expand? How can we continue to develop, continue to grow? What can we do in thinking like that? You don't necessarily need to take action yet. This is more about aspiration building and observing the opportunities that are around you. So that is what I'm seeing for you, group four. It's a very interesting reading. I feel like this is more confirmative. I don't think this is a prediction reading. I feel like this is more confirming where you're at right now and, and what might be happening in the immediate future. So I hope you found this reading helpful. This is everything that you needed to know about your money right now. It's been a pleasure to read for you, group four. I wish you prosperity, abundance, health, wealth, happiness, success, and joy on your journey ahead. Thank you so much for all of your time, your energy, and your support. And until our paths cross again, bye.